everyone and welcome back uh, to the fourth question about induction motors. And in this question, basically, we will be using the different tests that we conduct to find the parameters of the induction motor model. And before going to the question, I'd like just to give a bit of background about what is the importance of every test in finding what specific parameters from the induction motor model. So, for the DC test, basically, it will give us R1. As you can see here, this is a Y connection. So, we have two of the resistors. They are in series. We apply a voltage, DC voltage. We measure the current. Using Ohm's law, we will be able to find R, R1 from this test. So, this test will provide for us R1. Now, the no load test, basically, it will give us both X1 plus J or JX1 plus JXM. So it's X1 and XM. So R1 from the DC, X1, but not X1 and XM as individual value, but their summation actually. So that test will give us their, their summation. So we are left with X2 and R2. And what is the ratio of X1 with respect to XM? And here comes the blocked. Uh, rotor test in the blocked rotor test it will give us a value for r1 plus r2 as a lump sum and from knowing r1 we can find r2 it will give us also x1 plus x2 and usually there is an indication about the ratio of the two so if we have like for example a type a motor then x1 and x2 will be equal so we will find x1 and x2 Knowing X1, then I will be able to find XM. So this is how we use the test to find these parameters. So let's have our example. It says here a 208 volt. So this is the rated input line to line voltage. Six pole Y connected 25 horsepower. This is the output power of the induction motor. Now we have these three tests, the no load, the locked rotor and the DC test. We want to find the equivalent circuit of this motor and we'll cons consider that as design A. It means that the reactors is assumed to be divided equally between the rotor and the stator. So we start with the DC test. As we mentioned in the DC test, we will be able to find our R1. And this is since this is a Y connection. So basically 2R1 is equal to the VDC divided by IDC. As we I just mentioned, this is its Y connection. When we connect the DC, we, co we connect it between two terminals. So it will have two of the resistors in series. We assume that we have identical windings. So each resistor is, is exactly the same. And this is equal to 13.5 divided by 64. So from this, your R1 is equal to 0.10. 5 ohms. Now we will use the no load test. Now in the no load test, what we, we do basically, we apply the rated voltage. So we apply this rated voltage line to line, which is the 208, as we have mentioned in the question. And then we will have the no load current, which is basically the magnetization current. So I2 will be almost equal to zero. So the whole current is like this. So it is R1, X1, and XM in series because X1 plus XM much, much larger than R1, we ignore we ignore R1. So we will find from the NOLO test X1 plus XM. Now, how to find that? Very simple. X1 plus XM is equal to the single phase voltage, which is equal to 208 divided by root 3, divided by the current, which is 24 amps, and this will give me 5, 5 ohm. So I found the summation, a lump sum of X1 and XM. This is from the NOLO test. Now, let's see the locked rotor test. Now, in the locked rotor test, we will find the total Z locked rotor, which is equal to the voltage, which is 24, divided by the current, which is 64.5. And this will give me a, a total impedance 0.22 ohm. 
Now, this is the total impedance. This is the magnitude of R1 plus R2 plus J X1 plus X2. So this is the whole thing. So I need, I need to split the real part from the imaginary part. We'll use the power, okay? And this power, will from that, we'll get the, the power factor. So from this, that we'll find the power factor of the machine, the power factor is equal to basically the our power, the, the total power that we have, which is, Two two zero zero two two zero zero divided by root three, the v line uh, to line which is the twenty four point six times the current which is sixty four point five. This is your total power power factor, okay? And from this you'll get the theta which is cosine inverse of all of this two two zero zero divided by root 3 of 24.6 times 64.5 and this will give me a total angle uh, of 36.82 now we want to find the real part we know z from the previous calculation equal to 0.22 ohm now my total r which is r1 plus r2 will equal to the 0.22 times cosine the power factor of the log throttle test, 36.82. And from this, you will find that R1 plus R2 equal to 0.176 ohm. But I already know R1. R1 is 0.105. So from this, I can find my R2. R2 is equal to 0.176 minus R1, which is 0.105 and this will give me a total resistance r2 equal to 0 0.0711 ohm now let's find x1 plus x2 which is equal to the 2 2 sine the 36.82 and this will give me a total value equal to 0 0.132 ohms Okay, now this is, this reactance point uh, one three two is done at fifteen hertz. The log rotor test we do it at a reduced frequency. So I want to find x one x two corrected to sixty hertz. So how we do that? We multi we this is we multiply this by, by a factor of the 60 hertz divided by the test, which is 15 hertz times the 0.132, and this will give me a total value equal to 0.528 ohms. So this is x1 plus x2. Now in the question says that it's a class A, mean that the re reactance is assumed to be divided equally. So x1 and x2 are equal actually. So x1 is equal to x2 is equal to 0.528 divided by 2 and this will give me a, to a value for each one of them as 0.264 ohm so i found x1 x2 r1 and r2 what is left is xm which is equal to the 5 ohm we found earlier for x1 plus xm so it is equal to 5 minus the x1 which is the point to 64 and this equal to 4.736 ohm as you can see here xm should be much larger than x1 or x2 